Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we're talking about the top 10 baits of 2020. The baits that really stood out. The baits that caught the giants. The baits that were the most impactful as we traveled around the country this year. Twenty twenty was a crazy year for all of us, from the pandemic to us moving cross country. All sorts of things took place this year. There were way more anglers on the water than seemingly ever before. We all ended up with more time on our hands than we expected this spring. While we were on the water in California, out here in Tennessee, traveling up north and in between, we saw some patterns in our fishing. Every year we pay attention to what were the true standout baits. What were the baits that everywhere we went just seemed to get a better bite, seemed to get bit most consistently? Which ones caught our biggest fish? Because year to year, there'll be some consistent baits, but there'll be some new ones that come in and some old ones that fall off. So today we're talking about those top 10 baits. Now this really, kicks off our buyer's guide series. You guys have been asking, is there a buyer's guide this year? Yes, there is. We've got today, we've got Friday, and then we really jump into it on Monday. Here's what you guys need to know. We normally do three videos a week for the buyer's guides every day. There are so many videos that we need to pack in for you before it's too late that we're going every single day starting Monday and it's a long run of videos. So whether you're getting notifications or not, just know that every single morning there is a brand new tactical video for you. Now let's jump into this. Here we go, top 10 baits in no particular order whatsoever. First one, the Wobblehead with the Zoom Z-Craw. This is a combo that we threw literally from coast to coast this year and we caught big ones all over the place. We caught big old largemouth, big smallmouth, big spotted bass. In particular, I lost that giant largemouth while we were visiting Chickamauga before we even moved here. This spring, Clear Lake got shut down, completely locked down. We weren't allowed to fish from our own yards and the only place that we could go for a time for us to still be able to do tactical videos, Texas or Tennessee. So we jumped in RVs and drove all the way across the country just so we could keep content going for you guys. Now fast forward, we decided to move here as a result. But while we were here just visiting, this guy was slaying. This particular color is my favorite. The June bug color in that Z craw just flat gets big bites. And in the case of that big one here on Chickamauga, I lost the fish, but it still got that giant bite. Typically throw it in one of two sizes, half ounce with a four aught or three quarter ounce with a five aught. All right, number two, the tactical DD crankbait. Of course this guy is on the list, not because it was our brand new crankbait and this was the first year with it on the market, but because of the damage we did with it everywhere we went. From a couple of weeks ago, traveling, exploring new lakes, catching my kicker every single day on that bait, to back when we kicked off the year, before all the craziness started and I caught an early season giant on the crankbait, we've just had an amazing year speed cranking. This has been my favorite color this year. This is mirrored minnow. By far, that was my number one. Tim's by far was the DD minnow. Both excellent colors. I mean, we created every color in that lineup ourselves and we created them all for specific purposes. But this guy was by far my number one this year. That sun's getting a little harsh. You guys might notice I have a little spot on my face I had to have a biopsy done. We're gonna come back to that at the end of this video, but don't mind me. I'm gonna cover up, get some of the sun off my face. We'll talk about it in a minute. But number three, let's continue on. This is the Mega Bass Dark Sleeper. I had to dig high and low to find one at my house that wasn't just completely mangled like this guy. This bait put in work 
for me this year. The dark sleeper is an amazing bait. We talk about it a lot, we fish it a lot. Uh, if you guys recall any of our northern videos this year, we smashed with this little guy. This one specifically was my favorite. This is a half ounce in the Wagasaki color. If I couldn't get my hands on that, I would throw a three quarter ounce in the same. That Wagasaki color just killed it for me this year. Last year, my favorite color was Donko. This year, no question this was it. I probably put, I mean, I'm just guessing. I have no idea. Four or 500 smallmouth in the boat with this thing. And I was only up north around the Great Lakes for a handful of days. Now, they work all over the country. I love, every time we go anywhere near the Great Lakes, we throw these things because it just, it's an amazing profile up there. But it works anywhere in the country, down south, fish and largemouth. It's a fairly weedless bait, comes through the grass really well. Fish is extremely well though, on bottom, in cover. You can fish this thing as a swim bait, which is typically what I do. Throw it out, wind it back. You can fish it up in the water column, or you can bump bottom with it. But you can also fish this bait as if it were a jig. Fish it right on bottom and slow fish it, not as a swim bait. So many different things that you can do with the dark sleeper. It's a cost effective bait and it gets giant bites. Next up, the little tiny Kitek jig. I was so happy with this bait this year. I started and ended the year with really, really good smallmouth on this bait. Now, I catch all three species on it, catch more than that on it, but there's just something special about it. I guess the reason why I say smallmouth is because it's such a little finesse jig, little micro weed guard, little tiny hook. You can actually get away with throwing it on a spinning rod, but I usually throw it on one of my jerk bait setups. But you throw it on really light line, you get that jig profile. So when you come across a big fish, you can get that big bite, but it's not just that. It will also, because it is downsized, catch a ton of fish. So anytime you need to finesse it, say you're in a tournament, it's a tough lake, it's a finesse lake, you got clear water, but you're still hoping for that bigger bite, that downsized Kitek jig just rocks for that application. I pair it up with that Zoom, I mean, not, I'm sorry, not Zoom, Z-Man, little Z-Craw. That little guy, those stretchy appendages, is just such a killer profile. Now don't store it with that trailer on there. That little trailer will melt with other plastics, but that is my favorite way to set that jig up. All right, next up, the G-Rat Sneaky Pete. A big glide bait. Now, we've talked about the S waiver for years and years, and we had some rocking catches on the S waiver this year. We had another great year. But this was a bait we started exploring, playing with new baits, trying new things. The last few years, so many glide baits have hit the market. You've got to stay on top of that. This is one that has just stood out, started catching big fish, started getting a ton of bites everywhere we went. Hopefully you can see how chewed up that one is. But that bait, specifically this color, this has been my favorite. That's their hitch color, but it's like a white fading to a yellowish bone color to that purple scale pattern black back. And it has just been a fish catcher this year. Such a fun bait to play with. All right, next up, the Jackal Kaira frog. We really started throwing this, I think either last year or the year before, Clear Lake got really, really clear and that smaller profile made a big difference. Well, this year it has exploded for us. Everywhere we've gone, that has been our mainstay frog. We still throw the bully wall. We still throw a lot of different frogs, but when we're pulling up to a new lake and we're thinking, are they here? Will they bite? Can we get them on a frog? that is the frog that we tie on. It walks extremely well. It's got a unique body shape, so it moves a lot of water for its size. It has an excellent hookup ratio. Whoa, it is getting windy out here, guys. I apologize. Obviously, I can't control that. The main river is 
howling. I'm up here in this little tiny cove hoping we can stay out of the wind, but it's getting brutal. But this little guy, excellent hookup ratio, does really good in cover, does really well in the open. It's just a great all around frog. And that small size just gets bit when other frogs don't. Next up, one of the baits I was most excited about this year, Zomega Bass Vitalian. This guy is like a cross between a swim bait and a lipless. It's too big to be a lipless, it's jointed, but it's got this super tight action, a lot like a lipless crankbait, but it's big enough that it's definitely in that swim bait category. It's a phenomenal bluegill panfish type imitator. This bait, we started this year off in South America, guys. We started off by going to Guyana and fishing for some incredible fish. And I've got some of these that I just plain retired. They are beyond mangled. It was incredible. And then we got back here to the States and I just had this newfound love for it. So I kept fishing it. It worked everywhere we went. Even up north, I was throwing a gold color to kind of imitate the small mouth, some of the things that were in those northern waterways, and it was working on those smallies. It's an awesome bait. I fish it very aggressively. I do a burn, 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 pause, almost like speed cranking our crankbait, really, but burn, 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 pause, burn, 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 pause. And this bait has this super tight action, and then it'll just kick out and sort of float, and then take off, kick out, and float. It's an amazing profile. It's big enough to really imitate those panfish, but it's small enough that when those fish eat it, they really eat it. That's a great option and it is loud. So you can fish it in clear water, you can fish it in super muddy water, and it gets bit. Next up, the tube. This was the year of the tube for me. I can honestly say I caught way more tube fish than I did Ned Rig fish, drop shot fish, Nico fish. The tube was just one of my go-tos. It's funny how year to year, those preferences, those baits that you just have that confidence and you reach for will change. Uh, years past, the tube was not it for me, but this year it just flat got it done. This is the big bites tour tube three and a half inch one thing that i do with this tube a lot in particular if i'm up north see it's a wider tube it's got kind of that full bodied profile so if you want that fatter shorter profile that we sometimes throw up north i just pinch these legs down i take maybe a half inch off the end of those legs and it gives me that fat full body look and then the other thing is specifically this hook. Let me pull that out. It's that inhaler hook from Blade Runner. It was never even supposed to be a tube head. They built this thing to be a swim bait head, but it's got a really stout hook in it. So if you recall from this spring when we were fishing up north, jumbo smallmouth. I mean, I caught smallmouth over six pounds on this setup. That little hook, it's a small profile. It fits great inside of a tube, but it's a super heavy hook for its size. So I could still set it with five and six pound line, but it's a stout, stout hook. And I was very happy with that whole combination. Next, flexible A-rigs. How could I not talk about this this year? I mean, this year started with Tim boat flipping a giant on Clear Lake. Do you guys remember that? We were out there fishing, it was a cold day, it was early, early spring. He gets bit by a great big one. Before I could even think about getting to the net, in comes this great big fish over the rail of the boat. But these flexible A-rigs just get more bites than a lot of the rigid rigs that are on the market. So flex rigs were key this year. I actually, a few days ago, tangled with a muskie, completely unexpected. I was bass fishing and tangled with a mega muskie on the A-Rig. That fish ultimately broke me off. It was such a heartbreaker because it was a giant. But everything eats those A-Rigs and those flexible wires, you can pump that rod. You can pump it while you're reeling. Reel, 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 pop, pop. 
and that whole rig will open and close and it gets those really big bites from fish that have seen a lot of rigs, from fish that are wary. When that thing starts spreading out, they come in and eat it. And then last, but certainly not least, is a Zoom Super Fluke. The Super Fluke was such a standby for us this year. If you guys have, have stuck with us, watch the videos, you already knew that. But specifically this year, the nose hook. We've talked about it for years, but this is one of those years where I just rigged up a nose hook fluke. I kept it in my rod locker, and that rod went on every trip that I went on. From fishing out here on Chickamauga over grass beds, to fishing up north in ultra clear water, to honestly even chasing giant striper. I got on a bite one day where these striper would eat nothing. Your know, striper are supposed to be these crazy aggressive fish. They would eat nothing. I went down to six pound line on a spinning rod with a little tiny nose hook with that screw in there. And those jumbo stripers started eating it. You want to talk about a real dumping line, just, just screaming line. It was a riot. That little tiny nose hook will get bit because you can drop to lighter line. It's a finesse presentation and it will get bit when nothing else will. That has made a huge change in my fluke fishing game these past few years. Now, one thing, color. Smoking Shad, Electric Shad, Pro Blue Red Pearl are all my favorites. But this color, when I was up north this year, Tennessee Shad, Something about that color and those smallmouth. For you northern guys, just a quick little tip. That color right there was so deadly for me this year on our northern swing. That was awesome. Guys, that wraps up the baits. Uh, the buyer's guides, like I said, they're coming. Starting Monday, we go seven days a week. It is a ton of videos. We've been beating ourselves up getting them done for you. But it's important. This is a time of year where a lot of guys are investing in the tackle they're going to fish for the coming year. We want to make sure you've got all the information that you need in time. So we are stacking those videos up for you. We know you appreciate it. We are happy to do it. That is my top 10 of 2020. Of course, everybody's is different, but those were the baits that for me stood out, got the big bites, got bit when I was in a pinch and I really needed a bite. Those were my consistent baits that I relied on. Now, a quick note on this thing. So, all right guys, last but not least, my face here. So I've, somebody fired up a blower and I've got to get out of this cove anyway. So we'll talk while I troll a motor. So I've got a little bit of a hole here in my cheek. Uh, I had to have a biopsy done. It came back skin cancer. So this is squamous cell carcinoma on my cheek. I'm not telling you that because I want you guys to worry about me. I am fine. We caught it really, really early. I've got a Mohs surgery scheduled here in a few weeks. They'll open it up, get it all out. That'll be the end of that. Uh, the reason why I'm telling you is because I want you guys to take care of you. Uh, all this was, I wanna describe it to you because in the past, you guys know, we've struggled with skin issues. Tim and I both get a lot of exposure we're out in the sun a ton, even though we cover up, even though we mask up, we get a lot more sun than the average person. You guys, one, you need to cover up, two, you need to pay attention, three, you need to see a dermatologist. But I can't stress enough, sunscreen, obviously key, but also your sun gear. Wear a mask, wear sun shirts, wear gloves. I slack on my gloves, I need to wear gloves more. The others I do really well with. But it's really important. We don't care if you wear our gear or any other gear. Just cover yourself up from that sun. It is harsh. Uh, so this little guy, I get these rosy patches on my cheeks the last couple of years. Again, it's just sun damage. Well, I had these two little spots show up on it. They didn't look like anything. They didn't look bad at all, but they were different. And different when it comes to your skin is not good. So I went ahead and made an appointment with the dermatologist, uh, got in there to get checked, and sure enough, that little nothing is skin cancer. It happens that fast, it's that easy, but if you catch it early, 
it doesn't matter. You can take care of it. So guys, the last time that I had a skin issue, we did a video, we talked to you guys, hundreds of you went to the dermatologist and dozens of people found cancers. I was blown away how many of you, including my mom, watched that video. My own mother had a spot, went in, and it was also squamous cell carcinoma. She got it removed. But so many of you guys found stuff, got it taken care of, and literally saved your own life. Take it seriously, guys. If there's anything, you get little moles, you get dark spots, you get little rough patches. Just go see the dermatologist. It's no big deal. Like this Mohs surgery, I'll drive myself there, I'll drive myself home. It's not like this stuff is that scary, but you have to take care of it or it becomes something major. So I hate to end a video like that, but guys, take care of yourselves. We're taking care of ourselves so that we can all do this together for years and years and years to come. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. This past year was awesome. It was a trying year for all of us, right? I mean, everybody got run through the ringer this year but it was still a really good year on the water. A lot of new anglers came into the sport. A lot of good came out of this year. We appreciate you. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.